Okay, and this next in the series on troubleshoes of the oil burner, what we have is we come down to the appliance, there's nothing going on. I see the little red button, and you say, well, I'll push the red button. Now, during this uh, troubleshoot, I've been merely pressing this little button right here, this little red button. Remember, this is not something that you press and you can't get it to work, so you wait a little bit and you press it again, and then your uncle comes over and presses it again. And, uh, every time this thing tries to ignite, it'll run about 40 or 45 seconds, and then it'll shut off. Well, if there's fuel going into the burner, each time that unburned fuel is laying in the combustion chamber and what's gonna happen is if you get it lit it's liable to really take off and you may not be able to control it so limit the number of pushes on this thing to uh, probably two uh, so anyway just remember that issue okay now we come down to this thing and we are, uh, we, nothing's happening, so I push the button. Okay, I didn't hear any fire. I look in here, it's black. Okay, we got a problem. Now we got to figure out what's going on with that. Now we're going to do a close up on the combustion chamber while it starts. Now I'm going to get close here. To look inside, and you can see that fog in there. I think you can actually see that fairly well. Okay, what that fog is telling you is everything is spraying okay in there. You're you're getting your uh, your nozzles letting uh, uh, oil through, but it's not igniting. So you have an ignition problem. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to find out if I have spark. Now this is a transformer here and I've lifted it up like that. There's a couple of screws in the front of it. And here's your spark gap right here. Now you can test that spark gap. Now I've done it in a couple other videos and so if you want to look at a fairly extensive one uh, I'll, uh, I'll link the videos. But uh, I'm going to kind of do a quickie here. Uh, remember, this is about 20,000 volts. It won't kill you, but it'll sure wake you up in the morning. So you're going to test that. Now, one of the things you're going to do, you notice I got quite a bit of light around this furnace. And you may have two. Well, if you do, you probably got this little CAD cell right there. Okay, shut the power off to the furnace, and then remove the CAD cell. Just pop it out, and put it someplace else. Okay? Now, the reason I did that, the light is going to uh, be sensed by the CAD cell, and it's going to come up here and tell the CAD cell that there's a flame before I start it out, before I even called for heat, so it says, no way, not going to start. Okay, so you have to remove it. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to push that same button and let's see what we get. Okay. Okay, I got a good strong spark there. So I know that's not my problem. If I have a strong spark here, if I don't, if I can't draw this spark, remember I'm, I'm using a nice little insulated screwdriver. Don't get your fingers close to this thing or it's going to really wake you up in the morning. Okay, uh, if I have spark here and it's not lighting the burner, then my problem is somewhere in here. So I'm going to have to pull that gun out 
and see what the spark gap looks like. Okay, now we're going to pull that gun out of there and see if we can figure out what's wrong inside there. So I'm going to loosen this and take the gun line off. Now what I do when I take these gun lines loose, I loosen this and instead of bending this pipe to get it away, I loosen the other side. Okay, I got both of them loose. Now I can unscrew this one. My line just turns away uh, and I don't have to bend the pipe. Then there is the thumb nut. And I'm ready to pull the gun. Okay. I'm ready to pull the gun out over like this, up like that. And I take a look. I'm done where you can see it. Take a look at the gap. And I notice this electrode, instead of being up here where it could spark across there, is down. It's right on the nozzle. So it's going to spark to the nozzle. In fact, I don't think there's any space there, so it's not going to spark at all. It's probably just going to sit there and not light. So that's that was my problem with this thing. Is these uh, this was loose, and one of them turned down and shorted to the nozzle. Anything could have could have happened here. Let's take a look at this on the bench. Okay, here we've got the gun assembly right there so you can maybe see a little better and you notice this electrode here is down and shorted right to the nozzle so this was loose and this thing um, now let's get back where you can see a little bit more so this was loose in here there's a clamp right back there and it was loose and it just rotated down now other things can happen uh, you can get garbage between these two uh, and if you get garbage between them it'll just short across and it won't spark usually if there's garbage between the two it means you've got some sort of flame problem uh, maybe they're too far forward I do have some vids on how the how these guns should be set up where the electrode should be and so on like that and I'll, I'll put a link in here to those but in this case this is all we have so all we really need to do here okay I've loosened it up and I'm going to rotate this up and you see you need about an eighth of an inch there and then there's a screw back here I'll tighten it down now not all guns are identical here uh, this one the, you know, it, this hasn't been serviced for a little while, so there's some carbon on these uh, electrode insulators and stuff like that. That's all part of a service. But if you were just trying to troubleshoot to see why this thing didn't work, uh, that was our issue there. So it should start off now. Now, depending on how many times you push the button, if you push it 20 times, I'm a little worried here. I'm not sure you want to light this thing off. And so what's the choice? Mm, well, put a new combustion chamber in it, you know, tear it all apart. So, you know, it's it's not a good choice. So don't be pushing that button a whole bunch of times. It's, you know, you push it once and it don't light, well, okay. Then you maybe have to push it again for some troubleshooting. But after that, you should pretty much be done uh, pushing that button. Anyway, you can get that back in, and it should fire up. Okay, now I've got the gun back in, and I just want to know one little thing. See this little uh, uh, thumb nut? When you put the thumb nut in, there's two sides to it. This is a flat side. And this is the indented side. The flat side of this has to go towards the burner. If, and you just screw it on there. If you don't put the flat side towards the burner, if, 
if you put the flat side towards the nut, what will happen is you'll tighten against that flat and it won't seal. And the next thing you know, you'll have oil going all over the place. So you tighten it down again, you'll strip the threads out. Okay, make sure you get all the nuts tightened up. And one of the things I like to do, I like to uh, dry them out. And then I look for leaks once it's started. Okay, we've got this thing back in. We're going to give it a shot. That was good. I'd only press it a couple of times. So I get a little bit of smoke out. You can see just a skosh of smoke coming out of there. Uh, but it's going to settle down pretty well. So you're back running again, probably needs to be serviced, and a little more smoke out of that thing. This is, uh, this is kind of the result of what happens when, you're, uh, when you push that button a few too many times. It's oftentimes far, far worse than this, and it can catch uh, the house on fire. So Next we'll go into burner shutdowns. Uh, with a flame established and we'll check the cat cell and the cat cell relay.